Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over a thousand posts, videos, and podcasts, that's amazing, on medical preparedness for any disaster. Many of our readers are surprised to find entire chapters in our book devoted to the treatment of dental problems. Visitors to our store likewise surprised to find dental supplies in some of our medical kits. Why is it important for the survival medic to be dentally prepared as well as medically prepared? A standard first aid kit usually suffices for most short-term disasters. When you're talking about a long-term survival setting, however, you'll need a more varied set of supplies. Dental issues probably won't be a major concern if the power is out for a few days, but if you're off the grid for a few months or longer, dental care will become an important part of your role as survival medic. The effects of dental disease can be severe and at the very least impacts negatively on work efficiency. Have you ever gone to work with a toothache, for example? Boy, it's fair to say you probably weren't at 100% efficiency that day. And that's where you need to be if you're going to be off the grid long term. Now, there are many dental problems. Today, we're going to talk about a potentially life-threatening one in austere settings, tooth abscesses. A tooth abscess is a collection of pus under a tooth that's caused by a bacterial infection. Pus is comprised of dead and live bacteria, white blood cells, and debris. Most abscesses are related to tooth decay or poor hygiene, maybe dental trauma, gum infections, also known as gingivitis, or problems related to previous dental work. The abscess can occur in different areas, either at the tip of the root, called a periapical abscess, or in the gum next to a tooth root, periodontal abscesses. Periapical abscesses are more common, although truthfully, both can occur together once it gets bad enough. Now, an abscess first forms when bacteria enter through a defect in enamel. That is the tooth's armor. A cavity or a chipped tooth is commonly where it all begins. The bacteria spread all the way down to the root, causing damage to the nerve, and that causes pain. Once a nerve is dead, pain in the tooth might cease, but unfortunately, swelling, inflammation, accumulation of pus is going to cause pain of its own at the base of the root or in nearby gums, soft tissue, or even the bony socket of the jaw. Now, left untreated, this bacteria could enter the bloodstream and can cause a life-threatening infection called septicemia. Now, it's important for the medic to be able to recognize an abscess when it forms. It's commonly seen as a swelling in the tissue at the base of the tooth. <laughs> it may have a pimple-like head. Now, other signs and symptoms include a severe throbbing toothache, probably universal, spreading sometimes to the jaw or the ear, sensitivity of the tooth to hot and cold, sensitivity when biting down on food or gnashing your teeth together, uh, red swollen gums, especially in the case of gum infections, fever, facial swelling on the side of the diseased gum or tooth, and tender swollen lymph nodes under the jaw or in the neck. Some people will have foul smelling breath too. Without modern diagnostic imaging, it may be difficult to tell the difference between a periapical abscess and a periodontal abscess. There are low-tech ways to tell the difference, and you'll find them in my recent article on tooth abscesses at doomandbloom.net. I'm not mentioning them in this video, though, because the differences between the types of abscesses matter in modern dentistry. An abscess mainly in the gum, for example, might have a relatively healthy tooth nearby, which could be saved by root canal surgery and other procedures. In survival, though, these methods are not an option. So extraction of the tooth is going to be the most likely end result if you want to eliminate the pain and the infection. Extraction is going to be the answer, in my opinion, for the majority of dental emergencies and grid down scenarios. Although drainage of the abscess usually occurs via the tooth socket after an extraction, an incision with a sterile scalpel into the gum may be needed to drain it completely. This procedure is called an incision and drainage, or an I and D. The thorough flushing of the area with warm salt water or hydrogen peroxide, called irrigation, uh, that is helpful afterwards. And also give pain meds and apply warm, moist compresses to the side of the face in pain. Although extraction, drainage, and irrigation may be all that's necessary, it's prudent to begin, in my opinion, a course of antibiotics, especially for those that have fevers or facial swelling. Options include penicillin, fish pen, amoxicillin, fish mox, 
clindamycin, fish sin, and or metronidazole, fish zole. A course of treatment should last about five to seven days, and you'll find dosing for each of the antibiotics I'm mentioning in various videos on this same channel. Medical preparedness for long-term events involves having dental supplies and knowledge of dental anatomy. If you believe a major event is coming, consider a good dental kit to go along with your medical storage. This is Joel Nemdi, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. If you have additional advice for us, please feel free to post it in the comments section below. This is Joe Alden, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, make an old man, me that is, very happy by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Dr. Bones Nurse Amy, following us on Twitter at Prepper Show, and joining our Facebook group pages at Doom and Bloom or Survival Medicine Dr. Bones Nurse Amy. And don't forget, Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits are at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. Fill those holes in your medical storage. Thanks again.